I was looking for who to talk to. I call everybody I had to call. I call everybody I needed to call. I, I put a call to anybody that could just talk to me and give me strength because I was so scared. I call everybody I had to call. Everybody that would listen to me, that would give me words of encouragement, that would suggest to me what to do. So we lost the baby. We lost the baby. Like, I don't know, like, it is so painful, honestly very, very painful to be pregnant for nine months and then you painfully give birth to a, a child hoping to carry your baby nurse your baby and having been nursed the baby you know to a particular point then you miss unfortunately lose the baby this is so sad it's so sad a few months ago um my sister-in-law was pregnant and um, she was her pregnancy was two months older than mine I mean that of Venice you know so um, <coughs> she gave birth to her baby two months before me and then she gave birth to a baby boy well nothing happened to the baby the baby was a very healthy baby it's very difficult for me to talk about this but i just have to because it concerns baby and trust me you guys i have never been scared in my life like i was scared when my baby was not feeling fine when my baby lose a whole lot of strength i'm gonna be talking about the reason why i had to treat my baby in the house i'm gonna be talking about all of the experiences i went through in the hospital and um many things to talk about i'm going to be making a video about that because you know when i actually made when I actually posted um, the video of my baby not feeling well, a lot of people were like, some people were like saying, okay, you would have taken her to the hospital and all of that. I did. But that is a story for another day. You guys, the bottom line here is that my sister-in-law lost her baby, her baby boy. Just like I was saying, she gave birth. She gave birth to her baby two months before me. It was during the first time that um, Bernice, you know, developed fever. She was bulging and all of that. That you know, that first time I took Bernice to the hospital, she was she called. She was sympathized with us, and um, she kind of told us to be strong and all of that. You know. So, when we were discharged the next day or the two days i now heard that um our own baby like the last baby she has is not feeling fine too and it's still the same thing but his own is kind of worse because the baby was tooling and was vomiting why i say it's worse because bernice was not vomiting bernice was only stooling So she took the baby to the hospital and they stayed for seven days in the hospital. And then 
they were discharged according to her the stooling stopped and um, well everything seems to go back to normal and then um, all of a sudden after few days like five days or six days thereabout um, the baby boy developed fever again and then the baby was having this high fever but since uh, since the location of the hospital was very very far from where they are they had to wait till the next day before they could take the baby to the hospital that is actually the reason why I had to look for help and get somebody to treat my baby in the house because I did not want to wait till the next day that these people asked me to come back I'm going to tell you guys I'm going to make a video about that <clears throat> anyway <clears throat> So the next day, you know, she took the baby to the hospital and since the, lo the location of the hospital was very, very far, she arrived there in the evening and when she arrived to the hospital, you know, when they checked the baby, I don't know, you know all of this, our general hospital, you know how they delay people, you know, they would see that your baby is weak, yet they would tell you to to just still be be holding on they'll tell you just give the baby ors give the baby ors and the baby is really is losing a lot of strength that needs more than ors i don't know if i don't know you know so so then after every after she waited and everything they now find out that the baby does not have blood maybe because of the high fever that has that the baby had for a couple of days you know so find out that the baby does not have blood so they had to take blood from the mom and then you know put it into the baby but I don't know maybe that was late or that was the blood was not enough or there was something else that happened or maybe before they could start infusing this blood into the baby it was already late so that was how the baby passed on That was how the baby passed home. Now, the person I'm actually talking about here, my sister-in-law, is not the one we went to visit, you know, that stayed here in Abuja. You know, I have another sister-in-law who is um, my who is my baby's girl's mother. That's Elizabeth's mother, you know. So... During that time that they said that the baby was having high fever, they took the baby to the hospital and they infused blood and the baby passed away. That was the time that Bernice was also having a lot of fever, was purging all over again and I was so scared. I've never been so scared. I was looking for who to talk to. I call everybody I had to call. I call everybody I needed to call. I I put a call to anybody that could just talk to me and give me strength because I was so scared and my sister-in-law baby just passed on because of almost the same thing that is happening to my baby. Oh, that was happening to my baby you know I call my cousin sister I call everybody I had to call everybody that would listen to me 
that would give me words of encouragement that would suggest to me what to do I will pray for my baby I was so scared although this happened weeks back I cried I cried because she was actually looking for a baby boy but though she had one baby boy and God gave her another one you know which is this one that just passed away she has five children plus Elizabeth six so I just wanted to come up here because um, I've actually, I've, I'm actually experiencing a whole lot of things. Like in my first baby, I never experienced most of the things I experienced in my second baby, and God has stood by me. Initially, when the baby was stooling and permitting. She was actually giving the baby medicines in the house, like the ones she could, she knew, you know, the ones she could administer, she did everything possible she can, but, you know, none of those things were, you know, were effective before she took the baby to the hospital. And then, after that, after they discharged her, this one again that took the life of the baby I don't want to go on here because I don't want to actually start all over again and be crying I cried so much because I know what it is you know taking care of baby loving your child losing what you love so much I know what it, it means although I'm actually not, but I, I, I'm going to be putting some clip of when this whole incident happened and when I call her, like I call her over the phone, I recorded it, call my husband and all of that. So, this purging and vomiting thing is very, very dangerous for children. And when I took my baby to the hospital, the way they handle it as if it's just one simple thing. It was, it marvels me. <laughs> you know, it's maybe they did not want, I don't know, but the way they handled the whole purging thing as if it's a normal thing. You know, just give OIS, it's a normal thing. Just yesterday, I went to see so as body hot now you you've been you've been carrying go hospital jesus so him be no even get blood for body at all at all you've been they give him too much of antibiotics But that stooling and that vomiting where he been the vomit this. So all of a sudden the thing just fever just come now right? the boy just No, well, you know the other time I, I, when when you left the hospital after you stayed for some while I was happy because you know say me as I've been go hospital I know I know what I passed through I was happy that at least thank God he's okay and the stu and the purging don't stop even when I've been carrying my picking come up from hospital the purging be never stop oh. now when he can't come house now he, he... so blood just dry for picking body like that.
I'm so sorry. Can't audio suffer. Audio pain. No, well, I'll call you back, Sha. So sorry. your pain, all the suffering, all the suffering, all the pain, the expectation. The boy is almost one year old. I think he's 11 months old. And they've been happy that they have a baby boy. Baby? Mm hmm? Baby? Yes. Alpha. Baby? I can hear you. Can't you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. You don't call your sister. You don't call your sister. You don't call your sister. Yes. Call her now. I just finished talking to her. She said, she said, she, she said um, that uh, the la that last time they went to the hospital, that um, uh, the porch stopped there in the hospital. The purging and vomiting stopped there in the hospital. So that yesterday on that the the boy was just having is it yesterday or day for yesterday? No the day for yesterday. The boy was just running temperature like high temperature like that. So she now rushed the boy to the hospital. I said she the, she now the boy was having fever. She said the boy was ha having developing fever again. Uh, so yesterday, so she now rush at, rush him to the hospital like day for yesterday. So it was yesterday they now said that the boy does not have blood. They said the baby does not have blood. So she now donated her blood. You know, but the boy gave up. That the boy was running high fever. You see, see when when you if you. My baby run fever, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't faint. Uh, this video is just for you to know that if you, if, when, if you have your baby, or if you're having your baby already, when such thing happen, look for help any way you can, know, because honestly, sometimes you might even take the baby to the hospital and they will give. They, I don't know, they will give and it might not be effective, it's just, it's just God, just pray and take action, at least, do anything possible you can, don't just sit down in the house, don't just sit down. So after this whole thing, I've actually been calling my sister-in-law like severally i make sure that i call her to know how she's doing kind of try to encourage her you know try to comfort her you know and mourn with her you know she has other children that was the last one that was the immediate that was the last one that she gave birth to like she has one two three four five Six. She has six children, just like I said initially, but one passed on now. She has five children. So, 